So thus far, when we've been discussing equilibrium constants, we have been using Kc. And remember, Kc means that the concentration of our species involved in our equilibrium expression have been in molarity. But if you've noticed, many of the reactions that we use have reactants or products that are gases. So it would be nice to be able to look at equilibrium constants in terms of partial pressures of these species. So what we're going to look at now is how do we convert a Kc to a Kp. So a Kp means still the same thing. We're looking at an equilibrium expression. So that hasn't changed. But instead of molarity, we are going to be talking about the partial pressures of the species in terms of ATM. So with this, we already understand uh, the ideal gas law equation, PV equals NRT. But if we think about it, a concentration in molarity is moles per liter or moles per volume. So if we solve for that in our ideal gas law equation, we get that the concentration is related to moles per volume, and that is related to the partial pressure of a specific species divided by RT. So overall, what we get from this is that concentrations and partial pressures are related to each other by the gas law constant R and the temperature. So the equation that we get out is that the Kp, the equilibrium constant for a reaction in terms of partial pressures, is equal to Kc, the equilibrium constant in terms of molarity, times RT raised to the uh, power of delta in a gas. So this is something new that we haven't talked about. So in order to come up with delta in a gas, we need to actually look at the reaction equation. So R is still our gas law constant, 0.08205 liter atmos liter, liters atmosphere mole Kelvin, and temperature needs to be in Kelvin. So this says that the partial pressures that we're going to be using in our equilibrium expression, they're going to be in atmospheres. So delta in a gas is the summation of the stoichiometric coefficients of the gaseous products minus the summation of the stoichiometric coefficients of the gaseous reactants. So if we are given an actual reaction, we need to look at the subscript of each species involved in there, and we only look at gases. And then we say, what is the stoichiometric coefficient in front of each of those? And then what we do is we add up all the stoichiometric coefficients of the gases in the products. And so in here, we were calculating delta in a gas for this particular reaction. We have a two in front of our SO3, so those are two there. And then we subtract from that the summation of the stoichiometric coefficient for our gaseous reactants. So here we have a two, here we have an applied one. So we subtract two plus one or three. So overall, delta in a gas for this reaction is minus one. So if I give you the Kc, and I tell you it is uh, this Kc is true at 1,000 degrees C, we can calculate Kp now. And all you have to do is take Kc, multiply by R, which is gas law constant, times T, the 1,000 uh, degrees Kelvin that we are given, and then you have to raise to the power of the delta in a gas. We've already found that delta in a gas is minus 1, so we raise it to the negative 1 power. And from that, we get Kp to be 3.4. So still, our equilibrium constants are unitless, but just, this just means if we continue on and do some calculation that involves um, our equilibrium expression for Kp, the equilibrium expression needs to be discussed in terms of the partial pressures or ATM of the species involved.